Which of these would you rather do? Roll a cart 10 meters across a horizontal surface or push a cart up a one meter incline? If you're like most of my students, you selected to go 10 meters horizontally. They say that it's harder to push something one meter uphill. And they're absolutely right. To go uphill, you're going to need an applied force to overcome the component of gravity down the ramp. But if you're going horizontally, you really don't have anything you're fighting against. Now let's change the question a little bit. What if I said you have exactly two seconds to complete this task? Which one do you pick now? Did you pick to go uphill this time? Now one could argue that it's more difficult to go the 10 meters horizontally because you have to go so fast. The answer lies in our understanding of mechanical work. Work is the transfer of energy that occurs as a product of force and displacement. Now you may have seen this written as the formula work equals F times D cosine theta. Now that theta is important. In this particular case, the direction of the applied force is the same direction as the displacement. So the cosine theta term becomes 1 because the angle between the force and displacement is 0, cosine of 0 is 1. Now, since we have to speed up at a much greater rate, the applied force might be comparable to what was needed to push up the ramp. And in this case, we have to go much further. So the product of force times displacement might be greater. But force and displacement don't always have to be in the same direction. Take, for instance, a car approaching a stop sign. It has to apply the brakes, which cause the road to apply a force in the opposite direction. In this case, there's an angle of 180 degrees between force and displacement. And the cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1. So we have negative work. Which makes sense if you consider that we lose kinetic energy while stopping. And when we accelerate forward, the force is now in the direction of the displacement, which gives us gains of kinetic energy and positive work. Now what would that look like on a graph? A positive force over a positive displacement would look something like this. And since work is the product of force and displacement, then it could also be represented as the area of the shaded region. And in our slowing down example, force would be in the negative direction. So we would have a negative area. And that means negative work was done on the car. Now let's examine the work done by tension in a string, pulling a block up an incline. Now this question comes in two flavors, one with friction and one without. And let's take a look at both. In our frictionless example, we need enough tension to counteract the downwards component of gravity. So we can say T is equal to or greater than mg sine theta, where theta is the angle between the floor and the ramp, which is also shown right here. So the work done by tension is now going to be the product of force and displacement times the cosine of theta. Now, importantly, that theta is not the same theta as the angle of the ramp. Um, so our tension was mg sine theta times displacement of the ramp times the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement, which is 1. So ultimately, the work done in the non-friction example is mg sine theta delta x. But really, since sine theta is h over delta x, that just becomes mgh. And that should make sense, considering that there is no friction to resist, and what you get out of it is the gravitational potential energy mgh. Now let's consider the example of pulling the block up the ramp with friction. Now tension not only has to counterbalance the component of gravity down the ramp, but also has to overcome friction resisting the slide. 
So our expression for tension is going to be T equals mg sine theta plus F. And we can write an expression for work done by tension. And it makes a lot of sense that it would be the magnitude of gravitational potential energy plus the magnitude of work done against friction. And as a result, the only difference between our two terms of work done by tension is that additional work done against friction. But we can't be done. We still need to use theta. Let's evaluate how much kinetic energy can be gained by a 5 kilogram wagon pulled 3 meters from a 40 newton force at 30 degrees. Now there is an angle between the force and the displacement, so we are going to need to use theta. This question asked us how much kinetic energy was gained, so we have to make the connection that the kinetic energy gain is directly from the work input. So that kinetic energy is from work, which is force times distance times cosine theta, where the effective component of force in the direction of the displacement is going to be 40 times the cosine of 30, turns out to be 34.6 newtons. So the work now is the force 34.6 newtons times the distance 3 meters, and that gives us 104 joules. Now that we've covered work, let's check our understanding. I'd like to know about the work done by tension as this mass travels in a circle at a constant speed. Is it positive work, negative work, or zero work? If you picked zero, you are correct, because at any given instant, the direction of the force and the direction of the displacement are at a 90 degree angle, and the cosine of 90 degrees is equal to zero. This has been Mechanical Work with Mr. H Physics. For more, visit my website, Google keyword Mr. H Physics. Thank you.